The heading you should make is um, dangers within this method, I guess. Right? Um, there are three key dangers. Some places will identify four. I think the fourth one is not really a danger at all, which is why I'm leaving off this list. But if you want me to explain it, I'm happy to do so. Um, for the first two dangers, I'm going to illustrate them. And I'm not going to go through the mechanics of it. Just going to illustrate them with the previous example we were doing. X squared minus 3. Trying to find root 3 and evaluate it. For my third danger, I will have to appeal to a different function. You'll see why shortly. Okay. Now, remind me, rather than by section method, what is the crucial piece of knowledge, the crucial skill, that Newton method, Newton's method takes advantage of to be better? What does it use? It uses calculus. It uses differentiation. Okay. So therefore, even though that's a superpower, just as a tip, by the way, you know how we were doing root 3 before? And it's like the third approximation, your calculator couldn't tell the difference, right? In general, you know how we talk about um, decimal points of accuracy? In general, every application of Newton's method will double the number of decimal places you have accurate. That's why we were like, mm, 1.75, that's one decimal place. Then the next one was 1.732, that's three decimal places. The next one was like already seven or eight. Okay? So it's incredible how fast it does that. But differentiation is a problem. In fact, there are three main problems, and they all have to do with calculus features, with geometric features. Okay? So first I'm going to illustrate them, and then we will give them names. I alluded to this one before. Danger number one, if you take x naught, and if I have a particular x naught such that the tangent at x naught looks like that, what's the problem? Yeah. Like, why is that a problem? There's no x1. There will be no x1 because this guy never intersects with the axis, right? So the problem that causes there to be no x1, x1 is um, some people call it, well, it's a horizontal tangent because that's what it looks like. But more geometrically speaking, the real issue is that x naught x naught is on a stationary point. That's the real issue. Right? You see how calculus is involved here? If you choose x naught poorly with regard to the calculus, ge the geometric features of the graph, of the curve, then you're in trouble. If next x naught's on a stationary point, you're stuffed. Okay? Stationary points can cause another problem. Here comes uh, problem number two. <coughs> we'll try to find root 3 before. Okay? I hope you can see, if I pick an x naught that says here, Suppose that is x0. Okay. What will happen is I'll get my f of x0, I will draw my tangent, oops, use your imagination, towards x0. But then look at where x1 is. Can you see where x1 is? Where is it? It's um it's gone over here. Here's x1, right? Now I was trying to find root 3, but what I'm doing is I am converging to the wrong root. I, I will find one, but I won't find the one that I'm after. Okay. Now, in the case of this, it's obvious. Oh, we'll just get negative of what I was supposed to get. But in the case of like a cubic that looks like this, and you're trying to find this root, okay, numerically, this one, like maybe you can't tell without drawing it which one is which. So what would you call this danger? What would you name it? The negative. Yeah. Um, I would say you find the wrong root, or you approximate the wrong root, rather. Now, that's what happens. But why does it happen? What does it have to do with the calculus and geometric features of the graph? Think about it. What was so bad about the x naught that I chose? It was inside the curve and not outside. The I could say too far away, but you know what? I could pick an x naught that's really far away on this side, and it would be fine. What's the real problem? The the okay, now the sign of the gradient, that's what some people identify as the wrong problem, uh, the fourth problem rather. But this isn't the real issue. The real issue that takes me the wrong way is again the stationary point. That's the real culprit, right? Because I'm on the other side of the stationary point, right? When I start approximating, I'm going to approximate away from the root I'm trying to find, okay? Because I want the gradient to take me that way, okay? Whereas this take, is going to take me the other direction. Okay? Sometimes when you approximate, you're supposed to get a negative, but so long as you're on the right side, you'll be okay. Like if I wanted to find this root, the negative gradient is exactly what I want. So a negative gradient is not a problem in itself. It's just that I'm not supposed to get a negative if I'm looking for this one. Does that make sense? So here, x0 was a problem because it was on the stationary point. Here, if x0 is on the other side of a stationary point, you will encounter just as bad a problem. Okay. All right.
right, now, this one, I'm deliberately not going to draw a picture yet, okay? This time, I want us to just try it out, and I'm just going to let x0 equal 1, okay? Now, I happen to know there is a root near, uh, near 1, okay? It's quite close, in fact, and you can probably look at this, and I've chosen it to be easy, so you might be able to see what the root is, but I want you to watch the problem that emerges, okay? I'm obviously going to need f dash to do this. What is f dash? 3x squared minus 5, very good. So now watch as I compute x1. Okay. x1 is equal to, I'll just write out because I rubbed it off. This is the formula. And let's see what happens as I evaluate. Okay, so x0 is 1. What's f of 1? It's minus 1 four. take away 5, right? So that's negative 4. Do you agree with that? Uh, what's f dash negative. of 1? looks like 3 take away 5, which is negative 2. Are you okay with that? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So that's 1 take away 2, which is negative 1. Okay? No big deal. I'll, I'll, I'll just keep going. I'll just do x2 now. Okay? x2. Let's see what happens, right? x2 is, uh, I'm going to go through this whole process again by using negative 1 as my next value. It'll be negative 1 take away. Okay, what's f of negative 1? Put negative 1 in here. Negative 6. Careful. No, no. Four. I think it's 4, right? Watch the negatives because that's going to be negative and that's going to be negative. In fact, it's uh, negative 1 plus 5, right? So I think I'm getting 4. Yep. What's f dash of negative 1? It's 3 take away 5, right? Yep. So that's minus 1 plus 2, right? <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm in trouble, okay? So you can see something has gone drastically wrong. Okay, now take a step back. I said I chose an easy function. You guys know what this function looks like, right? Factorize it for me. Come on, have a look. You can take an x out, and then you get x squared minus 5. You're going to get root 5, negative root 5, and root 5, right? So this is a cubic. It looks like that. Okay. Uh, no. no. <laughs> so this is what it looks like, okay? Now, the root there, root 5, it's like 2 point, 2 point something. It's more than root 4, okay? I don't know what it is. So 1 is going to be somewhere around, I'm just going to, I don't want to be on the station point. sorry guys. Uh, it was something like that, okay? Now I went down, I found the tangent at that point, and it ended up sending me over to there. There was my x1. And so I went again, and I said, okay, well, let's have a look. Let's find out what the tangent will do. And it sent me straight back to my original value. And it's like Groundhog Day for calculus, okay? What we call this, this is the name of danger number three, it's called an oscillating sequence. Because it goes back and forth and back and forth, and it never makes progress, okay? That's what it is. That's what it looks like. Now can someone tell me, just like here in blue and here in blue, what's the actual reason it does this? And the picture will tell you. Let me give you a tip. It's not a stationary point. Um, point symmetry. There is a symmetry to this. There's obviously a problem, yeah. Um, is it because it's odd? Because it's odd? Okay, so odd functions are a problem, but it's not just that it's an odd function. It's that right here at the origin, I have a point of inflection. Okay? Now, if I take those two together, point of inflection and the fact that it's odd, what will happen is my gradients will always be reverse of each other. Do you see that? Right? Every single time. So they're always going to send you back wherever you came from. Okay? So really what happened was there was a point of inflection at the root we were trying to approximate. That was the problem. Okay? Um, and that kind of screwed us up. You could also refer to the fact that it's an odd function. That's an issue too. But it's really about the gradient and the concavity. Okay? So you can see Newton's method, brilliant if you know what you're doing with it. But because it relies on calculus, it has this kind of calculus Achilles heel. If you're not careful with it, right, then it'll send you down the garden path. Whereas the bisection method, he doesn't know anything about stationary points. So he's just going to keep on going in a sort of less directed way, but much slower. Yes, that's why it takes longer.